Today I'm going to show you how I make these round cement planters using a balloon as the mold. I will have the full list of materials in the links below. You can also read all the full details in the tutorial on my blog, artsyprettyplants.com slash cement balloon planter. The materials you want to start with are q-tips, scissors, a large sponge, where you're going to want to pull out the center of the sponge to give you a concave shape for cradling the balloon while working on it. A plastic bag will come in handy for disposing of the extra cement. You also need a round balloon, rapid set cement, water, and an extra bowl of water to dip your fingers in to help while sculpting. First blow up your balloon and then mix up the cement. I find it's better to have a little too much cement mixed than too little, especially because the cement cures so quickly. For this part, you only need enough to apply to one half of the balloon. Add the water and mix the cement. You're trying to get it to the consistency of cake frosting. It will be moldable, yet fairly thin. Please note in my written tutorial on my website, I started with the tied end of the balloon, but you could start with either end. Take the balloon and put it on the sponge. The sponge will help keep the balloon from rolling around while working on it, as well as help keep it from popping, although the balloon is really quite durable. Take the cement and place it on top. Start molding your way around the balloon. You basically want to sculpt the cement the way you might with clay. Your focus right now is just to get the cement on the top half of the balloon, and you can work on smoothing it once you have all the cement in place. Be careful not to go much past the halfway point, or you'll risk the cement being too heavy, and it will probably crack while it's curing. I actually placed the cement further past the midpoint than I should have in this video, which I didn't mean to do. I got lucky because the cement didn't crack, but don't take this risk. Once you get to the midpoint, you will want to feather the edges and taper them to make it easier when you come back to do the second half. This feather will help transition the two halves and make it easier to avoid a harsh line where the two sides meet. Wipe out the mixing bowl with a paper towel. This will help preserve the bowl so you can use it again. Now is one of the most important parts, creating the drainage holes. Don't skip this step, it's easy to forget. Take the Q-tip, dip it in water to make it easier, and just push lightly in the spots on the bottom. Twist the Q-tip around to help clear the hole. Now wait one to two hours for the first side to cure. The length of time will depend on what temperature and amount of humidity you, you are working in. Now that the first half is cured, mix up the cement for the second half. I made it difficult for myself by going too far down on the first half like I mentioned before, so it took a lot more finagling on the second half than it should have. Now add the cement to the other side of the balloon. Work on smoothing the line between the cured cement and fresh cement, and then make sure you leave a wide enough of an opening for you to be able to get your hand inside to plant whatever it is you are planting. Let the second side cure for about an hour. Add 
After the cement has cured, you can remove the balloon. Take a pair of scissors and cut the balloon where the end is tied. So now you want to reinforce the planter by mixing up some more cement. But this time you want it to be fairly thin so you can pour it in there or just scoop it into the planter. Spread the cement around in the planter or roll it around until you feel like it's fully coated. The coating doesn't have to be thick. Keep it under a quarter of an inch so it's not too heavy. When everything feels smoothed out, Clean out the cement mixing bowl one final time, and then grab one more Q-tip and clean out the drainage holes again. And that's it. Plant this with anything you would like.